Now let's look at part three. How do you find the angle measures? Okay, there's, here's some steps to follow. Let's go through these. First, we're going to find the unknown angle, so we're going to reference it, okay, and decide which two sides you have. Do I have opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? That will help us decide which trig function we're going to use. So for example, if I have opposite and hypotenuse, I'm going to end up using the sine function. Okay, so you look at the two that you're given, or if you have adjacent and hypotenuse, you would use cosine. So that's how you decide which trig function. Then we're going to set the problem up just like we do normally, but instead of the variable being x in the proportion, the variable is going to be at the angle. And then we're going to solve, and we're going to use this second function key to solve for it. So let's go through a couple practice problems here. Okay. We have practice one, find angle measure D. So let's look at our triangle. We have a D up here, a 28 here, and a 45 here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and label E and F for you. Okay, so what we need to do first is, the step one is decide which is our unknown angle. Well, D is where we're working from, okay? So from this reference angle, which two sides do we have? Well, this side over here is our opposite, and we're not using it, okay? We have the adjacent, and we have the hypotenuse. So which tri trig function uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine. So we're going to use the cosine function. Okay, the cosine of what angle? We, we don't know the angle measure, so the cosine of D is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to put 28 over 45. Okay, so there's my first two steps. So let's go back and reference. Okay, we, from the unknown angle, which was D, we need to decide which two sides we had, and we had adjacent hypotenuse, so we decided we were using the cosine function. Then we set it up, so here's our setup. Now we're gonna actually solve it. Okay, to solve it, we're gonna kinda set it up a little different this time. Remember, when we're looking for an angle, we're gonna work backwards, so we're gonna use our inverse button. Okay, so you can convert this to a decimal if you want, or we can just put the inverse of the fraction in also. So I'm going to show you both methods. So we're going to take cosine to the negative 1 um, of 2840 over 45. Okay, that's the fractional way. Or if you like the decimals, you can go into your calculator and do 28 divided by 45 and go ahead and get that decimal. Oh, six point, do, 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 repeating. So you could also take the cosine, the inverse of 0.6222 repeating. It's really up to you, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and clear this and go ahead and run through that. So I'm gonna take a second function, second of my cosine to get that, and I'm gonna put my fraction in, 20, whoops, 28, divided by 45. Okay, so there it is, and that means my angle is 51.5, or I would round that up to 52 degrees. So that means D is 52 degrees, and I figured out my angle, okay? So that's how you figure out the angle measure at D. Okay, let's try